The time has come to get back out and about for another pedal box road trip. This time, we're going to Retro Rides Gathering at Shelsley Walsh. So it's been two years since we were here at Shelsley Walsh and we've just started the runs for today. Uh, some of the special cars are going up. We've got more starting behind us, as you can see. Yeah, got a little bit of hill climb going on. I've actually got the Rover parked up in retro parking up on the hill, all the way up at the top, which is quite a cool area to be. Unfortunately, yeah. not really going to get to hang out with it very much today. But <laughs> yeah, we finally managed to get one of our cars to an event that we're at, which is just mind blowing. It's taken yeah. us nearly four years of having this channel to achieve that after setting one on fire, decommissioning it, and decommissioning are, yours, yeah, and, and we're not even are, running. Even sending it up the hill. Yeah. It's just <laughs> we're literally not even running it. We're just here to do some filming and hopefully see some cool stuff go up the hill. Man, I was really hoping that he was about to do yeah. that there. Yay! This is part one of our 2021 trip to Retro Rides Gathering at Shelsley Walsh Hill Climb. And there's lots more video to come, so if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell to get notified as soon as new videos are released. As always for the gathering, the cars were really, really varied and eclectic, even just in the paddock by the start line where Hill Climb Monsters had lined up all of their featured cars for the hill. Lining up here, we've got some proper rally legends with a Metro 6R4 and a Mark II Escort, although this one seems to be in a pretty serious time attack, guys, rather than a rally car. And just after that, there's a Ford Anglia and a deafeningly loud Subaru Legacy.
Just in the morning session, there was this Volvo 340 and what our kit car chassis probably could have looked like once upon a time, in this case powered with a Yamaha. There was also this Mark II Sirocco and a Sierra four-door saloon. This Frog Eye Sprite is fairly famous, powered with a 4G SE motor and once owned by Pipey McGraw, it's now owned by Wheelie Nuts, who last time we were here had that really impressive black Supra that just kept coming out of the fog every time it went to the line. And that wasn't all. The queue itself was a great place to just sit and car watch, all of the attendees lining up, chatting and getting ready to attack the hill in what they'd brought along. And it wasn't just stuff to make a really fast run up the hill either. There was also a couple of big American boats, so the Thunderbird would probably be really at home here next to this Chrysler 300. And just sat to the side here, there's a little Tykes car, powered by a lawnmower and with a set of drag slicks on the rear and pram wheels on the front. Apparently it's been up the hill and it was tooling around in the campsite. Why not? Uh, 
Jay here with Adam, living my boost life, who uh, you might have seen two years ago in our Retro Rides coverage with a scimitar, and it didn't quite go so well. No, that was a broken diff and gearbox at the same time. It was both, it was both, both of them, yeah. yeah. You thought it was one or other no, at some was, point on the side, but I it was... I was lucky enough to get both of them in one, yeah. one smooth movement. <laughs> Go big or go home, and in fact, go big, and go fail home. to go big, and then go home. <laughs> so this year, you've obviously come back in the comma, yeah. uh, which I've been following on YouTube as well. There is a good build log of various things that have happened to this, because this is not a normal comma, as this little badge might give away. So, so what did you? What was it originally? So it's a comma wanderer. Uh, it's a seventeen twenty five Hillman engine. Okay. So it's the same as like a Hunter and stuff like that. Yeah. Detuned for the comma van. <laughs> They're fifty-eight because, horsepower. Because obviously it needs less power. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So uh, fifty-eight horsepower, four-speed manual. Hey. Five to one ratio rear end. Oh. So it's absolutely screaming at speed. When you do eventually get there. Yeah. When you eventually get to, did it? I mean, did it do seventy? Uh, I had seventy out of it once. I timed the naught to sixty, <laughs> and it was thirty-eight seconds. 38 second naught yeah. to 60. That is horrific. That is bad. Ice ages have happened. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah so that's, uh, so you started in the Methozoic era. Yeah. <laughs> 60 was roughly last year. Yes. yes. Brill. Uh, but now it has been fixed. Yes. So be before I got to where I'm at now, I turbocharged the 1725. Right, okay. Through the car. Okay, so it's kind of always been a turbo. Yeah, so it went nice. totally stock, then I turboed the stock, the 1725, blown through the carb, got the 0-60 down to 20 seconds. But that's pretty good, I mean, that's is, almost half. Yeah, um, but <laughs> it um, it was still a leaky, horrible thing that screamed right. at revs, so mm -hmm. that's when the idea came to just change engine, box, axle, everything. Yeah, so. just put essentially everything on top of better running gear and yeah. start from better and then go up again. Yes. Yeah, so this one now has... So it's a Saab 2.3 turbo from a 9000, um, the B234. Yeah, so that originally started about the, what, 150-ish? Power. Yeah, uh, horsepower? Oh, it was 175 it's in that one. Lowest. Oh, okay. Three turbo power. And that's with on. That's just wastegate boost pressure. Oh, so about fair half enough. Bar of boost. Right, um, and you have sort of tweaked it up a little bit from there, or have you just been you've been yeah. chasing a bit of reliability here and yeah. there? Yeah, so as it is now, it's drivability, I suppose. Yeah. Well, <laughs> TDO four nineteen T and eBay special turbo on it. Yeah. It's got one of them and six thirty cc injectors. Right. So it's still on wastegate pressure at the minute. So yes. It's probably only about one ninety horsepower. Oh, okay. But, but it's the, still up a bit. So. When the boost solenoid is <laughs> functioning properly, it yeah. should be close to 300. That's, that's the plan. Which is absolutely the right number to have yeah, in yeah. an old van. Six times more power than it had originally. But. And it can obviously carry six times more cargo at that point. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can do the trip six times quicker. Yeah, it's exactly. perfect. It's maximum efficiency. What you want in a van is, is load capacity or faster load carrying. Yeah. It's all good. So, yeah, it's been up the hill, what, three times this morning? Yeah, three times. No issues? No, it was okay. Uh, no heat issues or anything. Excellent. I think, I've, I think um, the box is starting to slip in the higher gears, third and fourth. Right. But I just did the hill in second. And it was fine. Yeah, it's fine. Fair enough. Didn't need any more. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Uh, you know, you are in a van as you're coming up. If you've got a little tank yeah, slapping, oh, you ain't going to control Yeah, it. and it's still not exactly wide wheels no, anywhere. 185. I mean, they're 185. Van so, oh, tires. God. So, actual so van tires. Yeah, that's that's not a lot of contact patch no, it is not. For, for anything, really. Well, it's like a fail safe, really. If I, if I had more power, if I had more grip anyway, <laughs> I'd be able yeah. to destroy more parts. Yeah, basically. you run out of track. It's power limit. It's Sorry, it's wallet limiting. Yes, yeah. yeah. With, uh, with that, so yeah, so if you want to see more of this, you've got a Defender as well. Is it a, is series, series 2 series or is it 3? 2A. Two A. Uh, and obviously the Scimitar as well, and they're all kind of coming back to life. Or, well, this is alive, but yes. the others are coming back to life, which is all good. Uh, if you want to check them out on YouTube, it is just Living My Boost Life, all, it, yeah. Yeah, all up on there. They'll put a link in the description down below so you can check that out. Do subscribe, great videos, excellent person. And uh, yeah, we hope to see much more of this in future events. Okay. Hopefully you will. Thank you very much. No problems. Well, the car looks awesome going up the hill, and it's 
sounded great. So let's get back to more of the cars from the morning session going up the hill. We're over in retro parking now, which is where I stowed the Rover earlier. This is actually the first time that any of our pedal box cars have managed to make it to any of the events we've gone to. So, huzzah, I guess. It's not on the hill, which is a bit of a shame, but as I said earlier, it's just not quite well enough for that. So retro parking is kind of where everyone else parks up. Everything behind us over that way is club parking. So you've got like, you know, the Ford Club, the Young Retro Motor Club and so on. From here on that way, and there's a lot of it, is kind of everyone else. All the folks who just sort of rolled up on their own in cool old cars. So we're going to have a little bit of a walk around now and see what's about, and there's plenty of it to talk about. I think one of my favourite things about the Retro Rides events is I actually don't know what a lot of the cars are. There's some really, really obscure stuff. Like, obviously, we have Miatas, MX-5s, whichever you want to call them, depending on what side of the pond you're on. We have a beautiful, beautiful-looking uh, Lincoln Continental here, Mark V. Massive, massive yacht of a thing. One of the few cars here that makes the Rover look tiny, which is quite an achievement, I think. Um, all sorts of other stuff. We've got Calibras, Golfs. I think there's a Rover P5 back down that way. Another... Ooh, actually, I can't tell what Lexus that is. 
So yeah, we're just going to go for a quick up and down and see what's about in these two lanes. Unfortunately, there was a DB7 park next to me earlier and he seems to have cleared off. So he's, he must have been here for a, a half day. But yeah, it's one of those wonderful kind of events that you can have a Calibra and a Renault 19 parked up next to a Lincoln Continental and a pink MX-5 with a big spoiler. Just the variety of cars that wind up here is always amazing. And we keep saying this every time we're here. Just such a wonderful breadth of machinery. I was actually in one of the cars earlier getting given a lift up the hill so that I could sit by the, uh, by the S-Bend to get some video. No, no. And, um, well, I can't, I can't now. I'm actually going to find out what that is. For a Rover owner, I don't know much about my Rovers. It doesn't actually say it's just Rover 2000. Rover did that thing where it had a designation, but they forgot to ever like write it on anything. I do love a nice E36, especially a coupe, especially one that slammed with a big splitter. FDRX7, Harlequin Wagon. Beautiful, beautiful stuff here. I do love the RX7. I don't think I could ever bear to own one. The rotary just feels a bit too much of a gamble for me, but they are beautiful machines. I think they, uh, they appeal to the same part of me that the 944 does with that big, nice curved bay rear window on them. 911, kind of normal, unfortunately, by the standards of a lot of the stuff that's here. Some Vol, so, oh, not Volvo, telling on myself there. <laughs> Angry little 190 here with a big stinky turbo hanging off the four cylinder. I don't know what engine it is. I don't know enough about Mercedes to say, but I do know that he's going to make a lot of choo-choo noises. I actually kind of hope this is for sale. I love the vibe. I can't buy it. <laughs> Little 5,000 pounds stenciled in there. I'm actually not even sure what this one is. That is not a logo I recognize. Oh, it's just, it's a Toyota. Is that like a Sora badge? The more you know. And if we flip around 180, another wonderful example of the retro rides contrast. We've got a 316 wagon right next to a Trans Am. Pretty much standard around here, it's amazing.
So I'm here with Ian Hubnut, who has brought Betty down to Retro Rides Gathering, has made it. Betty's been doing a pretty good tour around the country. Because Did Betty get up to Festival of the Unexceptional as well? No, she didn't make no. Festival of the No, what did you travel up there? I'm we trying to remember. The day in the you were in the Matiz, of course you were, yeah. yes. We had got Betty in the country and on the road, yes. but it was all so close to the wire. Yeah, you're, you're really. Not to commit. Yeah, you, you've really got to sort of go with can you push it, can you push it, can you push it to make it work, and sometimes yeah. you just got to stop pushing and give in and be yeah, like, do you know what? Oh, yeah. So, but no, you made it up there, which was great. And obviously, you had your social one that you did recently that was really yeah, well I attended. Up at the motorist I, yeah, I watched the video on that. That, that was, was that was awesome. We didn't expect anywhere near as many people. So many cars over there. Over 200 cars. Wow, and that's so many cool. people amazed to see this car. Yes, exactly. They yeah. Seem to have bought into her adventure. So yeah. So Betty was originally in New Zealand and has done quite the trip before getting into the country and obviously that was a bit of a chore in itself. Yeah, so I, I bought Betty in November 2019 yep. and uh, drove her 5,000 miles around New Zealand. Yeah. Uh, it was like a dream holiday scenario. Yes, really. exactly, yeah. Uh, made lots of videos about that, which yeah. people are still buying into, people are still watching those playlists. Yeah, do check incredible. out uh, Hobnot on YouTube as well. We'll put the link down in the description. You can check out all of those videos. Yeah, so I was making videos as I went, and this car became a star of those videos. Yeah. But I had to sell her when I left New Zealand. I didn't expect this car to grow on me. I called yeah. her Ugly Betty, because the styling <laughs> yeah. is so unusual. Yeah. I fell in love with her looks and the way she drives. So yeah. I bought her back in November, November 2019, or was it November? No, November, no, November 2020. 2020, and then sold her. Oh, yeah, COVID. bought her back the second time in yeah. 2020. So yeah, bought her again, and and then um, had to go through shipping her over, and it, it just took forever. Yeah. So uh, she went on the ship in January 2021. Yes, the earlier this year. Yes. Earlier this yeah. year. Uh, landed in March. Yeah. But came via the Suez Canal, just avoiding the chaos down there. Yeah. And then she went up to Sweden and Amsterdam and Belgium. Yeah. Who would have thought um, the most direct route from New Zealand to the UK also involved yeah. the Netherlands and Sweden and everything else? So she finally reached Southampton <laughs> in uh, March of this year. Yeah. Went down, collected her, uh, took her to my friend's garage, Southways Automotive, yep. so we could do the work to get her legal. Yes. Which was mostly fitting the pod light and replacing the ball. That's not too bad, actually, yeah. That... Minimal work. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we did that and uh, got her back on the road in July this year mm -hmm. and less than a month later I managed to spin her off the road. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, there's another video on that about this this roundabout that you went around. It's, it was resurfaced and yes. it, they put a sign out saying, oh, it's a bit slippy and then decided to do nothing else about it. It was and very slippy. Multiple people went out, including yourself. And then, I just, what, so what was the damage total on that? It wasn't uh, too, we, we, we too extensive. We bent a backing plate and a half shaft. Could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah. So my, the my, alloy my, survived my as well? Sorry? The alloy survived as well? No, the alloy. Oh, it was the alloy gone. Oh, okay, fair a huge enough. chunk out of it. Oh, okay. But the following day, my friend Andrew in Melbourne yeah. uh, went to a scrapyard, because these are everywhere in Aussie scrapyards. <laughs> he pulled out a half shaft, a backing plate, yeah. and shipped them over. Perfect. And, Brilliant. Uh, posted them on the Monday, That's arrived on the Thursday. That's amazing. Fitted on the Friday, <laughs> and he went to the Hubnut Social up near Leeds on the Saturday. This, so this is a Barra, isn't it? This no. Is, the, is it not a Barra? Oh, no, this, this is pre-Barra. This is a Ford oh. Fairmont AU, which is like okay. a posh. Falcon. Yes. Uh, it's got a four litre six cylinder overhead cam engine. The very proud of the overhead cam. Yeah, because it's a straight nice six rather than a V. Silly so. Lexus in the back. <laughs> yes. And uh, it's still got a live rear axle, big beam axle in the back, so it's not. Leaf or? Coil springs. It is coil springs, okay. Leafs on the state. Really? So, Extra load yeah, carrying, they, they I suppose. Just like yeah, things as simple as possible. Wow. And that, that made her a great cruiser. That's wild. The, the, yeah, it's just, such a simple just, construction. Just goes and yeah. you fix it very easily. Hardy. And it's got what? You said a 
Coming up 300k on this. 300,000 kilometres, yeah. so 186,000 miles. Nicely broken in. Yeah, yeah, just about getting there. <laughs> I know, it, so it pretty, does it share a lot of commonality with the Barra as well, I suppose? It, so this is the pre-runner of the Barra, so, so this is like a single cam Barra. Oh, okay, like. fair enough, right. So the BA Falcon introduced yeah. the Barra engine. Got gotcha. you, uh, right. Legendary most of it it is. Indeed, yes, it's, uh, it's been but everywhere, done everything. But in tech. Ah. But nice. Its origins actually go back to the 1960s Falcons of wow. America. Oh, okay, fair enough. So, so this is old, 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 and just updated and updated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. four litre, six of them. <laughs> yeah. Back when fuel was cheap. Yeah. Ah, the good old days. Well, it's great to see Betty down. I've been following it for a while, so it was nice to see it. Yeah, and thank uh, you for yeah, along. no, it's all good. Thanks very much. We will continue on and keep walking around. Farewell.
46. It's been a great day here at Retro Rides Gathering at Shelsley Walsh. I'm here with Sarah, who's from the Midlands Auto Racing Club. Automobile Club. Automobile Club. So I keep getting it wrong. So close. <laughs> but we'll pr crack on anyway. Okay. It's been excellent. Now, you've had, obviously been suffering through COVID and everything yeah. else, yeah. where, like the rest of the world has, but you really sort of tried to push fairly hard to get motorsport going again once you could last year. So how did that go? Okay, yeah. So when um, we were allowed to, which was the in back end of July, yeah. um, Motorsport UK rulings allowed us to run events. Yeah, so it was just the spectators that were kind of... That's right. Yeah. So we, we were able to to run them just for our competitors so mm -hmm. we had great support from them so really we had good, yeah. but seven meetings last year that's, that's, obviously behind closed doors yes um, but it was great yeah. to have the hill back in action again exactly you know at least because you've got all of the camera gear here because it's all live streamed you should have been able to watch it on YouTube you today did. should have go back and watch it um, and you can watch it from there so like that all exists and makes life really
really easy for people to see it anyway, That's even if they can't be here. Yeah. And even if you are here, it's worth having it on your phone to watch further up the hill <laughs> as, <laughs> as they disappear off the line. You go, oh, okay, that's gone. So, but if you've got your phone, you can watch it all the way up. So, and luckily, yeah. we've got uh, our broadband allows people to do that as well a little bit. Yes. And we've got the width yeah. there, so that's so it's great. really, really well. good. So that technology is moving on. Which yes, is it's, it's catching up gradually, yeah. which is it's lucky, <laughs> all things considered, yeah, that you had yeah. the, the systems in place. But yeah. yeah, it's been really, really good seeing the support from everybody here today for you. Obviously, you've got your sort of your um, circuit that you go around all the different hill climbs as well and do things. We've been chatting to some of the photographers here, yeah. and they follow sort of your that's your club right. round. Yeah, well, we're lucky that you know we've got our competitors our members go around different hill climbs mm -hmm. um, so you've got the different championships so that obviously died down last year whereas yeah, this year very much. it's back into it so yeah. everyone's really keen to get out Speaking of some of the photographers that are here at Shelsley Walsh this weekend, I'm here with Ollie, who is through the eye of Ollie Photography. And you can find him on Instagram and Facebook. And he does really, really good pictures, like significantly better pictures than I take of cars. And you've been doing it for how many years now? Uh, three and a half. Three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And everyone's going to want to know what are you shooting with? You've got your. I'm um, shooting with there. a Nikon D5500. Nice, so that's uh, his own camera and he shoots everything himself. Everything that goes onto that account is his own work. It's absolutely glorious. It's really, really good. So if you haven't already, you should definitely go and check him out. Follow him on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and yeah, give, give some love to the, the pictures because they are absolutely superb. And the ones from this weekend should be going up fairly soon, I would imagine. So it's been uh, it's been a really good day. It's been, well, it's been a really good weekend. We've yeah. only been here today, but it's been going since yeah. yesterday with That's the quick right. sixty. So, so. Yeah, the quick sixty yesterday. Yeah. Obviously, very different weather. Yes, but it was really tipping down here yesterday. Very wet, oh. but still really exciting. Yes, yeah, it was nice to see a different format yeah. that we normally do. Yeah, because so it was really every good. run counts. It was a big knockout it, all the way to the end. So go and have a look at that because that was live streamed on the Retro Rides TV channel as well. So go and ha watch that because that was really really good. I was watching that one. I was yeah. finishing my uh, camera trolley yeah. to bring all the gear. Perfect. Yeah, I was actually, I wasn't here yesterday. So oh, really? You were watching it as well. See, it's yeah. just, it's perfect. So, yeah, so that's, uh, it's really good. We'll be back again next year. Brilliant. Um, we look forward continue to Continue coming all. back. It yeah. is great fun. It's a lovely day out. Yeah. It's, you just come up into the Worcestershire countryside and have a nice day, especially when it's sunny. I've only been here once when it rained badly. That was 2015. And at some point, I'm going to edit that video, but it is not going to be this week. <laughs> So, yes, thank you very much, Sarah. No, Thanks for, thank have, for helping with a brilliant event. It has been excellent. Brilliant. We'll be back.
Well, we're up in the show now. There is loads of stuff here in Retro Rides parking. As you can see behind me, there is Betty. That's Hubnut's car. Managed to get him up here safely. Uh, we bumped into Laurie as well from Laurie's Mechanical Marvels earlier on, which was really cool to see. So we had a chat with them. And now we're just going to take a walk around Retro Parking and see what there is kicking about, because there is loads and loads of stuff here. There is a whole bunch. Well, as you can see, there's a five-door Mark II Golf uh, and a Nova Fiesta, and then a whole bunch of Fiats back here. On, as you can probably tell. It's all done up in the Jurassic Park theme, which is excellent. And it even has a C5 on the roof, which is really, really cool. Not entirely sure how you get that down quite so easily, but I'm sure it's great. And on the left, we have a whole bunch of Rover Metros. There's loads of them, one after another, all here. I mean, it is big. It is a big club of them, so you'd expect a lot of them to be here all in one, but they're looking really, really nice. That one looks a bit more serious because it has a big fat turbo underneath. So that Metro is looking pretty serious. There's a nice Reliant Scimitar over there, which is looking really good as well. That's really clean. Got to assume that, that must have had some work. They never seem to survive looking that good for that long. Uh, as you can see, the, the Metro line continues all the way up to this one, which is very rally looking, which is great to see. Um, and then 
part. What else have we got? So yeah, so that was the Metro Power Group, so explains why it's full of metros. Over here there's a Prelude, which I'm pretty sure was following us all the way in this morning when we arrived. There's not many of these kicking about on the road, especially. Few, very few cars with actual pop-up headlights still. On this side we've got the Ford Console, and I think that's a Mark, yeah, Mark 1 Jetta over this side as well, next to the console, and then some lovely big Volvo Power. Nice big long roof Volvos there. So we've got Triumph 2000 over on this side as well. We don't see many of them left anymore. That one's not looking too bad, all things considered. I mean, it's a K reg, so it's going to be well, mid-60s. My, uh, my knowledge of the old Triumphs isn't that good. Nice bread van next to it as well with a big intake in the grill. I'm guessing that's probably not that stock. Nice mini and a more, slightly more modern bread van after that. And on this side, there's a couple of Daihatsu Shirards. You do not see many of them kicking around anymore. So to see two next to one another, it's a little bit weird. And one of them has been fully caged up, so I bet that's a bit brisk. So yes, yeah, so this Daihatsu is a really nice looking 12 valve uh, turbo. So I'm willing to bet there's even fewer of them on the road than there are Shirards at this point. Although I'm willing to bet quite a few of them have probably gone. And it's just the really nice ones, the interesting ones that are left. So down here we've got BMWs, E36 and an E30 wagon. Do love me, a wagon. So even though the paint's looking a little bit tatty on this, it's really nicely cared for. Or other than that, you can see the really nice patina down the side. And once upon a time, I went around the Nürburgring in an Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition, which isn't too far removed from this Evo 5. I can tell you it was horrendously terrifying. Brisk, really good fun, but at the same time, equal parts fun and abject terror because it was absolutely insane. And the guy hadn't been driving it very long, so it made it extra fun and terrifying that way. So at the top end of this row, we've got the XR Owners Club. So we've got a massive selection of XR3Is, well, two XR3Is, one coupe and one uh, convertible, XR2i, XR4 Sierra, and then another XR3 uh, Mark IV Escort, I think. Those two are Mark IIs, that's a Mark IV. And then there's another Mark III XR3i on the end of the row, that side. And then this is West Midlands All Sorts Club, which I'm guessing probably has all sorts of different cars in, considering there is a Honda, another Ford XR2, and a Rover 216 Cab. Now, I haven't seen many Hillman imps on the road, or indeed anywhere ever, and here there are four all behind me, and there's at least two more on the hill as well. And I know also very little, and yet there is a company that I didn't know existed, one and then the little saloon version. I didn't even know that body style was ever made and this is probably the only time someone will spend so long talking about imps when there is a skyline on the other side. And this is how you relax at the show. Walked around a lot, getting a little bit tired. Just drop the back of the seat in front of you down, put on a nice cassette and just relax. What could be better? So this is the Toyota Century. As you can see, aside from all of the masses of tech and luxury inside, it is an enormous car. Wing mirror is right out front. This is a very Japanese Luxo barge. In fact, this is probably the most Japanese, most Luxo barge that exists. Um, it's a five litre V8. It's only about 220-ish horsepower, uh, similar sort of pounds feet torque, but it just wafts around everywhere. It's a very lazy, relaxed, super quiet thing to just cruise about in. It's basically made for the diplomats, the government and everybody like that. And there's not many of these in the UK. I actually saw one of these in London not that long ago. And I thought this was the same one because there are so few, but this one's not the same one. Uh, and they are just, they're really thin on the ground, but look at the size of them. They're just absolutely fantastic to look at. They're enormous, they're plush, they're just, they're full of technology. Even like, the sort of the early generation versions of this had phones and computers in the back in the 80s. It was absolutely wild, and the amount of gear in this is just incredible.
So aside from Chris's SD1 being at the show, there is also a much better racier version of his car here. And this is a proper TWR uh, Rover V8 with the V8 in, and it's just been up the hill and it sounded fantastic. So you originally built the car, you'd, sorry, your dad originally built the car yeah. and now you maintain it together and, yeah. Yeah. and run it as is. We, we run it, race it together. Um, we do a, a series called Motor Racing Legends. Nice. Um, uh, which we, we run the run the car in. Mm -hmm. uh, we were fortunate enough to do uh, the Festival of Speed at Goodwood. Oh, awesome. uh, A number of weeks ago. Brilliant. Um, again, we're trying to outnoise most things. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of driftwork cars here who are on the limiter trying to compete with you, and you just sort of trundle by, make a bit of noise, and they all disappear and yeah. go away into the yeah. distance. Pop, pops and bangs and things like that <laughs> without noise, it, but. Um, but just raw power um, yeah. and noise from, from this is just it's just awesome. How much power does it make? Uh, 305. 305, Not okay. Not to be specific. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty close. It's, it's a well over 300, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. it's, um, it's still running 3.5 litre. So okay, so it's, yeah. ah, it's, it's not bored, it's not it's not decent to stroke no, or no, anything it's, like it's that. Built, it's yeah. exactly as it was the three and a half. Yeah, yeah, nice. It's, it's built and maintained um, and owned by Ken Clark Motorsport. Um, mm -hmm. The engine's built by John Eels. Okay. Well, so who is the Rover V8 man? Sure. Um, <laughs> Just uh, passing the engine, receive goodness back. Yes. Yeah, Perfect. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> exactly um, what you want. The car's got sort of a, an interesting history, shall yeah. we say. Uh, at the end of 83. Because it, um, it was originally built in 83 was, for the 83 Championship. Was, yeah. It won the, uh, the Touring Car Championship in 83. Nice. It was then stripped of that for some technical yeah. infringement. Say. <laughs> um, it won, and it we won. think it was That's unfair. It. Yeah, we'll, stick, we'll, stick, yeah. we'll stick with it won. Um, it then sort of 
got the shell and stripped of its running gear. Yeah. Um, the shell was then used as a spare, just in case. And luckily, yeah. it was never ever used again. Yeah. It then went into it Europe. It was never praying, never cut up, never just mothballed, basically. Yeah, it, it was, yeah. You, you, yeah. You're absolutely spot on. Um, it then disappeared off into Europe as a show car. Right. Um, around all the Rover dealers. Um, eventually found its way into a scrapyard. Would wow. you believe? Where it was, um, it was found sat on top of another car. Um, At least it wasn't the other way around, and something sat on top of this. Yeah. So it's um, wow. as lucky it still retained all of its original um, instruments, switch yeah. gear, um, some telltale bits. Largely, other than stripped, it's all largely original parts. You know, sort of yeah. the, obviously yeah. spec seats and all the rest. But like dashboard is original console. That yeah. you name yeah. it, and it's if all you look, uh, as at all is. The clocks, apart from the rev counter, it's got a, a modern rev counter in it. Yes, um, makes sense. All, all the original clocks. Nice. Uh, the original ones that were in the car. In That's cool. And there's not many of them around still running all of their original parts, yeah. let alone a championship winning. Yeah. However, <laughs> however yeah. you want to, to classify it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's amazing. So definitely if it's uh, going up again, we're going to get some video of it going up the track once again. Yeah, it'll, and, yeah, uh, it'll, it'll go up again. Cool. Uh, what time, I don't know. Um, we'll hear it. You will, you will. <laughs> definitely hear, hear it. it. See it. Yeah. Um, we'll hear as it starts yeah. up and like tootles around the back and be like, yeah. go, 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 run, go. Run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, so, it's uh, so. really good to see. Uh, I don't know, Chris, Chris really likes the uh, the SD ones, obviously. He's got two. Okay. Uh, so he's okay. got 2600, which we have on the channel, and he's Somebody been gradually rebuilding it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the 2600 is kind of being mechanically rebuilt, and uh, it's just been, it just had all the, all the bodywork redone. So it's had all of the rust taken out, metal put back in, and then repainted. So it's looking, uh, really, looking really good. Nice. And it's just, nice. Nice. it's going to get turbo eventually, as is planned. So okay. it's going to be a boosted 2600 SD one. Around about 300 brake is the target. So okay. yeah. So you're going to put a turbo on the size of um, Chelsea yeah. Walsh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Big turbo, many lag, yes. anti-lag, fine. Yeah. yeah. They weren't the most reliable and strongest of engines at the no. time. But, um, it's, uh, hey, good we, luck with that one. Yeah, it's stripped one apart and uh, the crank is enormously oversized for, what, for the amount of power it has in it. It's horrific. It's just like, this is 50% of the weight of the engine is just the crank. So yeah, yeah but no, we're looking forward to seeing this running if, up again. If it doesn't work, it'll make a good boat anchor. Exactly. Like that, it <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much. No we'll uh, we'll see you on the hill later. Yeah, you will. Thanks Brilliant. for your time. Thanks. Thanks.
We and I'm sure everybody that went to the event wants to make a heartfelt thanks to all of the marshals and everybody else who made this event possible. If you're interested, you can check out marshalling and do a taster day near you. Just go to the link in our description at the bottom or go to marshals.co.uk and have a look there. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell to get all the notifications when we put up new videos. Have a look at shop.pedalbox.show for merch and more. And have a look at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show if you'd like to support us, our channel and the builds from as little as a dollar a month. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.